just what stands out from when you watch film in terms of Cade Cunningham and what he can do on a basketball court? Yeah, we've been watching Cade for a long time in the circuit, a uh, product of Texas high school coaching and um, just a great player. And a lot of respect for him, uh, his brother, uh, the Oklahoma State program. Uh, he's a guy that can impact the game in a lot of different ways. Uh, he's not just a scorer. He's not just an assist guy. He, he can do it all. Uh, he's got a great pace the way he plays. He knows how to win possessions. He's not out there chasing stats. He plays the game the right way. Um, he makes his impact on the defensive end as well. Um, he's one of the best players in the Big 12. There's no doubt about it. And then in terms of Oklahoma State, uh, they're one of the top teams in the nation in terms of rebounding, and they do it with, with a bunch of their guards. What makes a team like that so effective in terms of rebounding with guard at the guard position? Well, obviously, Mike emphasizes it. He does a great job coaching. Um, it's a part of their identity. Uh, and then they've got really good players uh, that embrace rebounding. You know, Isaac's a guy we have a lot of respect for. Uh, just like all great players, he improves uh, from season to season in the off seasons. Uh, and definitely this year, you see a special emphasis of rebounding. Uh, what is he, like the second or third best rebounder in the Big 12? He leads Oklahoma State in offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. He's a playmaker, uh, but he's playing all over the floor this year. Um, obviously, other guys on their roster embrace rebounding. They've done a great job with impact recruiting. Their new players are, are making a contribution. So I would agree with you. Rebounding is a part of their identity. Uh, it's a real concern for us. Let's go to Carlos. Chris, in the first two games uh, that they played in the Big 12, they've lost by a combined four points, two one possession games. I guess, is that just something that kind of like what you said, it just it's just going to be a battle every game? in terms of the Big 12? Yeah, Oklahoma State's in the in the fight for the conference championship. There's no doubt about it. I've always said, you know, you don't even start looking at those standings until February hits. They're one basket and one rebound away from being 2-0 and in our conference and probably in the top 10 nationally in the rankings. Um, this is life in the Big 12. Said it over and over again. The difference between first place and third or fourth is, is one possession. The difference in uh, second half of our league and and being a two or three seed in the NCAA tournament is three or four possessions. So it's awful early. Um, I think Oklahoma State will be right in the middle of the fight for the championship. Um, to me, it's too early to even look at records. I, uh, on paper, it says 0-2. I, I think they're, I think they're uh, you know, again, a basket away from being 2-0, and probably ranked number eight in the country. I know Eric alluded to the rebound, and I guess I kind of felt your guys have stepped up in the last game. You had 17 offensive rebounds, second best so far this year. Uh, did, uh, I mean, it, for, for lack of a better question, I guess, uh, was it an emphasis there, or did you just feel like there was more guys that were kind of showing a little bit more toughness in that game? Yeah, both. Definitely an emphasis. Always has been and always will be. Uh, we talk about playing the, playing the game the right way on offense, and we talk about defending and rebounding on defense. Uh, rebounding is, is always the, the number one thing you look at when you study the champions of this league, not only in recent history, but since the league was formed, the Big 12. Um, so, yeah, we emphasize it, we teach it, we coach it, we hold guys accountable. Um, like everything in our program on this year's team, we're a work in progress. Um, but I do think our players have embraced it. Uh, we've, had some, we've had some great moments, you know, whether it be Kevin McCullough getting three offensive rebounds and about – 10 minutes of playing time, whether it be Marcus uh, up there in the rebounding uh, rankings, both in the country and in the Big 12. Um, you know, we got guys on offense that we asked to crash. Uh, and we've got every guy on the floor for us. Uh, we asked the defensive rebound. So we're, we're trying. It's an emphasis. We got a long ways to go, but I think it could end up being a big part of our identity. I know Kyler probably hasn't had the point totals that he's wanted, but it seems like he's helped in other ways. You kind of alluded to it. He one of your top rebounders the last couple of games, seven and eight, respectively. I guess what, what have you seen from him to where he's been able to kind of shift his game to where he's affecting it in a different way for you all? Yeah, I think he's getting it done. I think he's always kind of known what we ask of him, what the expectations, what his job is. 
Uh, he's always been talented enough to do it, but just the consistency, um, the urgency, uh, does he understand that's what he has to do for us to win? Uh, these last couple of games, you know, he's been our leading defensive rebounder. That's the way it should be. Um, you know, you got guys down there blocking out. You got guys down there trying to keep other guys off the board. And a lot of times the guard in this league, you know, can end up being your leading defensive rebounder. We see it with Isaac at Oklahoma State, and we see it with Kyler on our Texas Tech team. So, um, no doubt about it, Kyler is a guy, in my opinion, to be an all-defensive player, which he has the talent and desire to be. You know, he's got to be in the top two or three in his league in defensive rebounding. He's got to average five, six defensive rebounds a game for that to translate into him being an all-Big 12 defender. Last one for me, Mac McClung had a pretty successful day against Oklahoma State last year, 33 points. What, what do you remember from him kind of looking at tape when you guys were recruiting him that allowed him to be so successful against the, the Cowboys last year? I wasn't at that game, Carlos. I, don't, um, I remember that in recruiting, but I – haven't watched that game at all. Um, maybe I should. Good idea. Um, you know, what gives Mac a chance to make his impact on every game is that he's a talented guy um, that's embracing coaching. He's trying to play the game the right way. He can impact the game with scoring and assist on offense. Um, he can impact the game on defense with his athletic ability and his competitiveness and intensity. Um, so he's a guy that, you know, has to play well for Texas Tech to win. That's no secret. Coach, um, for very good reason, Kate Cunningham gets most of the attention at Oklahoma State, but they've also got another pretty good freshman by the name of Rondell Walker. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's kind of one of the things about our sport. You know, I, I would argue Cade's a great story on the Oklahoma State team, but I think there's a lot of other great stories too, whether it be the returners like an Avery Anderson or an Isaac, guys that improved, the Boone brothers. And certainly, like I mentioned already before, they made an impact in recruiting. Um, I would agree with you. Um, and also the transfers. They got three or four first-year players that are playing with an aggressiveness um, and not, you know, um, what's the word, deferring uh, to anybody. You know, I don't, I don't see these young guys coming down the floor and just holding the ball and looking, you know, where's Isaac, where's Cade. They have an aggressiveness to their team where uh, they got five guys on the floor that are a threat. I think that's why they're off to a great start. I think it's why they're one of the best teams in the Big 12. Probably a good, you know, problem for any coach to have, but with the return of Kevin, how does that sort of change, you know, your rotation? Uh, Kev's definitely deserving of minutes. He's one of our best players. Um, you know, things change from game to game, from practice to practice, and it's up to the individual players to to, to earn their own path. Um, you know, nothing's given around here, uh, nor is it in any of the other top programs in the country. Uh, when you come to Texas Tech, you understand what you're signing up for. There's a relationship between production and opportunity. Some of our young guys are early in their races, um, and it's about improving each day, and it's about being ready when their number's called. Uh, some of our veterans understand the expectations here. They have to produce for us to win. They have to produce for to, to continue to get the opportunity of, um, you know, the platform of why they chose to come to Tech. So um, I think Kev coming back is, is a great thing, 100%, period. Um, it's one of the best players in the Big 12 rejoining our roster. Um, it's up to other guys to understand that they got to continue to earn their opportunities, as does Kev. Sort of a follow up to that, but you know, this may be a game by game basis. But how deep into your you know roster do you expect to go each game? Yeah, our expectations are to try to win each game. Uh, got 13 active players. Uh, when they're all healthy and ready to play, we go into each game with with a plan to use all 13 uh, if needed and as needed. So, um, like for example, right now we got a couple guys that aren't really in the rotation, um, but I can't tell you any clear. They're a big part of what we're doing. You know, we have an idea and a plan for all those guys to contribute in tomorrow's game if that's the game, if that's the way the game unfolds. Uh, we're not redshirting anybody this year. Everybody's active to play. Um, everybody gets ready to play. Everybody's prepared to play. Um, and then we do the best job we can to put our team in position to try to win. Thank you.